Hello, this is Michael Osborne with Webucator. In this video, we're going to explore several possible approaches to the problem of retrieving distinct values from a .NET generic list object using Link. Now, this video is based on a blog post by Vincent Durano. Vincent agreed to let us create this video showing his solution, which is available as an article on his blog at the URL, which you can see here. All right, so let's begin by defining the problem that we're trying to solve. I've built a simple little web form application here. This web form application has a single form in it. You see the form presented here. And the form has three controls on it. It has a label, a data grid, and a drop-down list. Now, kind of ignore the drop-down list for now. We're, we're going to talk about that later. For now, what we're concerned about is the data grid. What I'm going to do is I'm going to construct a list object containing a collection of products. And I'm going to bind that list object to this data grid. So first, let me show you the definition of the product class, which is defined here. Very simple product class. It has an ID, a make, and a model. Just a simple little data wrapper class. In my form, when the form loads, I begin by calling a little helper method called get products. That get products will return to me a, a list containing products, which I will then set as the data source for the grid view one. Then I will call data bind to present the data. So let's go look at get products real quick. Get products, a very simple little method. All we do is again, we declare a instance of a list class of type product, a generic list. We then add in 13 products and we return that list. So let's run this and take a look at the result that we get. And you'll notice in looking at this list, the data that's bound to this list, that I have some duplicates in here. For example, Apple iPhone 6 occurs twice. HTC Desire occurs twice. And the Nokia Lumina 930 occurs twice. So the, this is the problem we're trying to resolve. How do we go about eliminating these duplicates in this list? So the first thing we might try is to use the link distinct operator. You'll notice I've modified my code here a little bit. And in this code now, when we make our call to get products, we call get products dot distinct. Now, in theory, this should return to me a distinct collection of objects. In other words, no duplicate value. So let's run that and see if, in fact, we get what we expect. And you'll notice in looking at the result, that no, we did not. We, in fact, still got duplicates. Why did we still get duplicates? Well, here's the issue. When you use the distinct operator, distinct will, by default, use the equals method of the object. Now, that method defaults to reference equality unless it has been overridden and replaced. Reference equality simply says if they are different references, they are different objects. Therefore, it considered each one of these objects in the collection to be a distinct object, even though the values may have been duplicated. So that wasn't really a very good solution. What's our next option? Well, we actually have three possible workable solutions to this problem. The first solution you see presented here. You'll notice in my code that when I make my call to get products, I, in addition, use a link operator group by. I will group up these rows by the make and the model. I will then select the first or default for each group. This result will then be bound to my grid view, and you'll see when I run this that I will actually get a distinct list of values. So let's give that a whirl real quick. And now you'll notice in looking at this list, there are no duplicates. This was, in fact, a workable solution. Okay. Our second workable solution involves another pair of link operators. You'll notice in the code here, when I call my get products, I append to it a select, a link select. Now, in the link select, what I'm selecting is the make and the model for each row. And then I call the distinct operator. Now, in this case, because I've selected the make and model, I'm looking at the values rather than reference equality. Therefore, when I run this, it will, in fact, work. So let's give that a try. And you'll notice again, we have our list. We have our make and our model. But we do not have that uh, ID number that was in the 
the original object because we've only selected out these two fields. But you'll notice there are no duplicates. We have, in fact, eliminated our duplicates. So this is the second possible solution to this problem. Okay. Both of those solutions were effective. They did, in fact, remove the duplicates from the list of products. But they really did not address the root of the problem. The root of the issue, the reason we could not use the link distinct operator was that when you use the distinct operator, it uses the equals method on the object, which by default uses the default equality compare, which will in fact do reference equality. That wasn't working for us. So the much more elegant solution to this problem is to create our own compare object. And in fact, in the code on the screen, that is what I have done. I've declared here a class, product compare, which implements the iEqualityCompare interface of type product. Now that interface describes two methods, which I have in fact implemented, the equals and the get hash code. In the equals method, the first thing I do is I check to see if they are reference equal. In other words, if they're both pointing to the same object, in which case I know they're the same object. If not, I will then check to ensure that neither of the objects is null. I will ensure that uh, reference equals x is not null or re reference equal y is not null. Assuming they are not the same reference and neither one of those objects is null, I will then return the x make equals y make and the x model equals y model and, and those together. So assuming the make and the model for both objects is identical, that will return true. These will, in fact, be equal objects. Then, in my get hash code method, I've, I've replaced it with my own hash code generation. Essentially, what I do is I verify that the object is not null. I then check to make sure that the uh, make is not null. And if it's not, I will store in my hash product name integer a result of a call to the product.make.getHash code. Then I will call the product model get hash code and store that in the hash product code. Then finally, I will take those two variables, the hash product name and the hash product code, and I will use an exclusive or to or them together, producing a final hash result, which I will then return as the hash code of this object. Now, once I have defined that comparer, I can then go back in my code, and in my form load, I can simply call getProducts.distinct. But to the distinct, I will pass it an instance of my product comparer, which tells it this is how to compare those products to one another. Now, if I run this, you will see that, in fact, I have eliminated the duplicates in the list, and I have all of the fields. And this is just a much cleaner, more elegant solution. So at this point, we've resolved the issue of eliminating duplicates from the data grid. That was the major problem we were trying to address. But we have one more little piece that I'd like to discuss. You'll notice down at the bottom of the form that there is a drop-down list. Now, currently, the drop-down list is not populated. Suppose I would like to populate that drop-down list with values from the make or the model or both. We can approach this in a very similar manner to the first two solutions we looked at earlier. So let's go take a look at some code real quick. I've added a bit of code here to my form load event. And you'll notice in this code that I've added, I'm setting the data source of the drop-down list. Now, my goal here is I want a distinct list of make values. In other words, the values in the make column. So what I do is, again, I make a call to get products. And I use a technique similar to what you saw earlier. I use the group by link operator, grouping by make. I then select the first or default, which will then return to me a distinct list of make values. And I assign that to the data source of the dropdown list. I set the data text field to make and the data value field to make. And then I call data bind, which binds that control and assigns those values. So now if I run this, you will see that the drop-down list is now populated with a list of unique values for the make of the product. Now, alternatively, I could also use the select and distinct operators as you saw earlier. And in fact, in the code, that's what I've done here. You'll notice I've modified my get products call. 
I've replaced it actually. And in the replacement call, what I do is I call the get products using the select operator where I'm selecting the make and then dot distinct, which will in fact retrieve the distinct values for make. Then I again set my data text field to make, my data value field to make, I call data bind, and now it will reflect again in that drop down list. So let's go take a look at that real quick. And again, you can see that in fact the drop down list has been populated with all the appropriate values. Now, again, you saw both of these solutions earlier, so this is really nothing new. This is just kind of a rehash, a, a more, more specific method for retrieving distinct values for particular columns rather than for the entire object or row. Okay, I'd like to again thank Vincent Durano for the great blog and for the inspiration for this video. Be sure to check out his blog at the URL shown here for some additional articles related to .NET development. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it.